Hello everyone and welcome to another super science video with the Mass Dent Regional Library. I'm Ms. Stephanie, one of the librarians in the Youth Services Department here and today for this month we're going to be making a bird feeder because it's springtime and that is the peak season for bird, some songbirds to be migrating and I thought it would be a great way to help our feathered friends out and also because it's Earth Day in April I thought that making it out of recycled toilet paper too would be great as well. And you may think like you need a fancy bird feeder to watch birds from the background. No, you could even just take something as simple as this orange, slice it in half and put it outside and you would have all sorts of birds on there like robins, catbirds, even a woodpecker or oriole might even get a delicious treat. So, and the one we're gonna make today is a little on the simple side as well. So you'll just need a few things from around your place. You will need a paper plate, this is going to get a bit messy, so I recommend a tablecloth. You'll need a butter knife. You'll need a craft stick to help for the birds to perch on. Hole puncher. Bird seed, but if you don't have bird seed, sunflower, unsalted sunflower seeds or peanuts or even plain Cheerios will work as well. And then you'll need scissors to cut the yarn. The toilet paper tube with no toilet paper, of course. Duct tape, and um, I wanna note, this is really important, peanut butter, um, but you wanna get peanut butter that does not have the ingredient xylitol on it. And I will have this on a slide as well because that is not very good for the birds, but you can get peanut butter, organic peanut butter, store brand peanut butter that is also organic will work well too. So just be sure to check your label before you get the peanut butter out for this experiment. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's what we need to, the first step we need to do to make our toilet paper tube bird feeder. We need to take our hole punch and make two punches at the top and do them a drip. There's one. A little trouble getting that out. And let's do number two. There we go. And um, try to make them directly across from each other too. So we don't need that anymore. Next, we're gonna attach the perch on. So we've got our craft stick and just small enough for songbirds to get on, but not bigger birds like crows. So we want the smaller ones. And so I'm gonna put a piece of duct tape here and a piece of duct tape here, just like put a little closer. And then I'm gonna fold it so that it sticks to the bottom and then wrap it up a little bit like this to secure it. And just because I don't want this to fall off and the birds to accidentally like get hurt, I'm gonna secure it again with another piece of duct tape on both sides. So we've got that. And then let me go over to the other side. All right, so there we go, we've got our perch. Then the next thing we need to do is I'm gonna go ahead and tie the yarn on. I cut it with some scissors. It'll just, it's just easier to do while the bird feeder's not that messy right now. And you may need an adult to help you knot it. So one knot here and then do it here. So I made this kind of long because I wanted to dangle down so that squirrels and other um, animals that might hurt the birds, like cats, it would be harder for them to get to this bird feeder if you hang it from a branch of a tree. All right, so let's do one more knot. Okay, great. Now here's the fun and messy part. We're going to put this up here. We're going to get our peanut butter, the one that has no xylitol on it. Get a butter knife. And you're just going to smear it. It doesn't have to look pretty. It doesn't have to look perfect. But just smear it so it covers most of the surface. So I'm going to do it right here and just have it stand up while I'm not. I'm having a hard time getting this peanut butter out. Hold on a second. There we go. Yeah, because they love peanut butter. The fat in the peanut butter is very good for birds. And... Most nuts are very good for a lot of songbirds, so it's just that ingredient xylitol is not good for them, although it's okay for us humans to have. 
So just go all the way around. I've got one more, one or two more sides to do. Let me, here we go. Cause this is where, how we're gonna make our seed stick. So, and I think one more knife full should do the trick. Perfect. Okay, so I'll smooth it out so it that goes on more of the surface. It's not quite as clumpy. There we go. Great, so let me set this aside. Then we're going to get our bird seed. I poured it in a paper plate. And we're just gonna kind of dip it, move it around. See how it's sticking? Oh, there's a lot of good stuff sticking there. All right. And because it might be a little harder for the side where the perch is, you can just take your hands and do it on this side too. Press it down a little so it doesn't, when you're taking outside, it doesn't quite spill all of it out. So there we go, that's a little better. And I'll put a couple more right here. So we got our bird feeder, so you can go ahead and take it outside. Hang it from a high branch, have an adult help you, and hopefully you'll see some cool birds soon. Happy birding! Alright, well I hope you enjoyed making your bird feeder today. And just keep looking. Sometimes it might take a while for the birds to find it. So, But I hope you can see some really cool birds with it and i'm just going to share a few books today that i used when i was making this video the first one this was the main one that i used for this experiment is how to feed bead how to feed backyard birds and this book is was so helpful it was just like there's all sorts of different ones you can make there's some ones that take a little longer that you might find that you like in here too it gave good information about what was good for the birds and what was not good for birds which i've included in the slide and best of all there is some pictures of birds that you might see with your bird feeder so and it was just shared how important it is for us to help the birds because they eat harmful insects they help um, pollinate which means as they take seeds from one plant or pollen and move it to other plant which helps them grow so it's really really good guide and also speaking of guides i won't talk too much about these but the library has a ton of bird watching guides especially for kids this one is you young birders guide to the birds of eastern north america which is where we're at and then the Smithsonian Field Guide to Birds of North America East. So these are just two of many really good bird watching guides. Lots of pictures, lots of good information. And this one, I would kind of call this a bird watching graphic novel. It's, it was such a cool book to look through. She gives, um, Annette Kate is the author of this, and she gives such good information about um, what to look, when you're bird watching, how to identify birds. And it's not just their colors and like it's their shape and their beak, although this, the, the rainbow of color that she drew was, was my favorite part, it was a lot of fun. But like shapes, just their beaks, their feet, it's just like really helpful. It's like giving you the skills on how to better identify them. And there's also some other tips, like their feathers, and just some more, just basic information about what to look for when you're looking for birds. And it's just such a cute book and I highly recommend it. It's got a lot of good information, but it's such a fun read as well. So thank you so much for joining me for this month's super science video. I look forward to sharing more books with you soon and experiments with you soon. Have a good day. Bye.